uh, what can we learn from that? So first thing that's really critical. So Z, you remember Z. This is a value from unemployment. And uh, what we said is that it captures both positive and negative forces. So what's positive about being unemployed um, is the fact that you have extra time for leisure, the fact that you have time for home production, um, and the fact also on the financial side that you may be eligible for some government benefits. But what's negative is that when you're unemployed, um, you know, a lot of people value their work, uh, that they give a lot of importance to having a job, that they're a source of identity. And so if you don't have a job, a lot of people um, happen to be quite miserable about the experience of being unemployed. And we see a lot of big mental health costs from um, from unemployment. And in fact, if you survey an unemployed worker, you see that when they lose their jobs, there's a big decrease in their mental health uh, outcomes. So it's not clear whether Z is positive or negative. In fact, Z could be negative if the net effect of being unemployed is, uh, is negative. There is actually a cost from unemployment. Um, and you know, there is evidence pointing in that direction. So, um, so we don't know if, if Z is positive, Z is negative. Something we see here immediately is that if Z is equal to zero, which is not an unreasonable calibration. D log theta D log A is exactly equal to zero. So in the case Z equals zero, your model doesn't give you any uh, business cycle fluctuation. So there are no business cycles in the model. In the sense that uh, your tightness never moves. So employment is going to... Uh, oh, your tightness never moves. The labor supply doesn't move. So here you really have no business cycle fluctuation. So it means that theta, L, so employment, the unemployment rate, the vacancy rate, they, uh, they do not respond They do not respond to productivity. Okay, and so here there are just no business cycle uh, at all if z is equal to zero. So there your model is really not helpful to think about business cycle. So why is that? What's the intuition behind this result? Well, actually, it's pretty simple. Uh, if z is equal to zero, the idea is that uh, the wage that comes from surplus sharing is actually going to be uh, proportional to productivity. So your wage is going to be what we call flexible. It's going to move one for one with productivity. W is uh, proportional to A, the labor productivity. So it means that W is um, what we call flexible. And so in a world like this, where your wage is flexible, anytime your labor productivity goes up, Firms, you know, they would think, okay, I have workers who are more productive, I'll be happy to expand the size of my firm, but the wage also goes up one to one with that increase in productivity. So, whatever extra profits the firm were anticipating from higher productivity, they are absorbed by the increase in wages exactly. So, that at the end, the profitability from a worker is not changing at all because productivity moves, but the wage moves one for one with that. And so, firms have no incentive to change anything. Um, sure, workers are more productive, but they also earn more. So firms have no incentive to change the size of their firm. Um, and so when your wage is flexible, the wage absorbs uh, the fluctuations in A, so that the, the demand, and here, you know, we have the case of a linear production function, so the demand is just a tightness uh, is independent of A. And in fact, um, algebraically, you can also, uh, you can see that pretty easily. So 
So if z, z is equal to 0, your wedge is actually going, uh, is going to be equal to beta a 1 plus r theta, which is, as we can see here, it's proportional to productivity. And therefore, once we plug that, uh, once we plug that into the labor demand relation, So you remember that the labor demand relation is that A, productivity, marginal benefit from employment has to be equal to marginal cost, which is 1 plus tau of theta W. So that's going to be equal to 1 plus tau of theta, our labor demand, times beta A, 1 plus R theta. And here you can see you have A on the left hand side, A on the right hand side. You can get rid of that, you get a 1, get rid of that here. And uh, so your labor demand relation becomes one is sorry, one is equal to um, one plus tau of theta beta one plus r theta. Okay, but in particular, uh, this labor demand relation is independent is independent of a the productivity shock that we were uh, studying. So it means that productivity can change as much as you want. In fact, output is going to change because even if employment is fixed, if there is higher productivity, uh, you'll have higher uh, output. But tightness is not going to change, employment is not going to change, and employment is not going to change. And in fact, um, so Scheimer, um, the paper by Scheimer, 2005 in the AER, made that point, uh, although in a slightly more um, subtle way maybe. So that paper didn't set z is equal to zero. Instead, it tried to set z to an, uh, a realistic value, which uh, was set in that paper to 0 0.4. Now, when z is equal to 0 0.4, there are some fluctuations in unemployment and vacancies and tightness, but they are very small actually, uh, much below. Uh, much below what we see in the data. And the logic is a little bit the same, that when the z is at 0 0.4, actually that's quite low, that's close enough to zero. So your wedges are not perfectly flexible, but quite flexible. And as a result, they absorb most of the fluctuations in productivity, and, uh, and so there is not much fluctuations in unemployment and tightness. And it's quite easy to see that with the formula that we have. So if we take the Scheimer calibration, we set z is equal to 0 0.4, And uh, we go back to our expression here. Uh, what do we have? So, so we have, so we're going to take z equal to 0 0.4. So we need to also, if we look at this expression, we need to uh, compute a, the productivity. So let's set a to one, uh, just it, it's, uh, you know, it, it's irrelevant. The 0 0.4 is always uh, expressed as a, as, the, um, as a fraction of a. So 0 0.4, it's really made as 0 0.4 times a. So here we set 0 0.4, so let's set a to one, just as a normalization. That's just a normalization. It means it has no bearing on the result. Okay, so what are the other things we need to compute here? So we have an eta, so eta 0.5, as usual, that comes from evidence on the shape of the matching function. We have beta, the bargaining power. So actually the problem also with your push sharing is that it's very hard to measure that bargaining power. Um, in part because actually the real world doesn't look like uh, wage setting is set by surplus sharing. So it's very hard to find evidence to know what that beta is. But traditionally what people do is to set beta is equal to eta. So here it means we set beta equal to 0 0.5. And there is no good reason for that. Uh, the reason that's given is to ensure that labor markets are efficient. There's no reason to believe that labor markets are efficient. So this is more like a, a tradition to do that. But you know, for the time being, and to replicate a little bit the argument in China, let's do that. OK, so we have beta, we have eta. 
tau, we have to compute tau. Tau is our total producer ratio. What I was saying is that the data is around 3%. Okay, so we can set that to 3%. Uh, right, and then the last thing that we have to compute is r theta here. We have to figure out what that may be. Well, actually, so that we can kind of back it out from what we've already done. So remember, so the level demand relation, if I use it again. Uh, it's A is equal to um, A equal to 1 plus tau, 1 minus beta, Z plus beta, A, 1 plus R theta. Right, so that's my labor demand relation. But now I've set values to most of these things. Okay, so A, we said, so let's replace. So A, we said what would be equal to 1. 1 plus tau is going to be 1.03. 1 minus beta is going to be equal to 1 half. Z is going to be equal to 0 0.4. Beta is going to be equal to 1 half. A is just 1. And then we have 1 plus R theta. Okay, and, and that has to be true because the level demand relation is true. So basically, once I've calibrated all of these things, uh, there is really only one R theta that's consistent. Basically, you know, there's only one tightness, equilibrium tightness that's consistent with all of the things that we've plugged in. Uh, and therefore, there is also only one R theta that's consistent with what we've plugged in. So um, let's try to solve for it. So we'll have 1 is equal to 1.03. Then we'll have 1 half of 0 0.4, that's 0 0.2, plus 0 0.5 times 1 plus R theta. OK. Uh, and so that gives us R theta is equal to uh, 1 over 1.3 minus 0 0.2 times 2 to get rid of the 0 0.5 minus 1. Right. And so how much is that going to be? Well, I guess it's going to be roughly, this is roughly 1 minus 0 0.2, that's going to be uh, 0 0.8 times 2, it's 1.6 minus 1. That, I suspect, is going to be very close to 0 0.6. Okay? Uh, and so we are going to, we, you can check it, um, you know, with your calculator, but here we've got essentially 0 0.6. And so we are going to set here. R theta is equal to 0 0.6. Okay, grand. So now what is the calibrated um, what is the calibrated value of D log theta D log A. Well, using all the numbers that we've uh, introduced here, we'll have D log theta D log A. It's going to be, so if we go back, so we have a 1 minus beta Z in the numerator. So 1 minus beta Z, that's going to be 0 0.4, that's z, times 0 0.5, that's 1 minus beta. And then in the denominator, if we go back, we have uh, a, which is going to be just 1, so then we have a beta r theta, beta is 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, that's for beta, r theta is 0 0.6, plus, and we have a last term, so we dealt with beta r theta, and then we have an eta tau over 1 plus tau. That's going to be actually tiny. Eta is 0 0.5, then tau over 1 plus tau is 0. It's 3%. 0 0.03 divided by 1.03. But you know, this is going to be, um, so 
is going to be essentially zero. So we have a zero point two here, then we have a zero point three here, and then we have something that's going to be uh, three percent roughly of uh, zero point zero five. So that's going to be something really tiny, like zero point zero one five. Okay, and so this thing that we get here. So this is telling us, uh, you know, three percent of right. So this is telling us that d log theta d log a it's you know, essentially two thirds. Okay, and you can you know I've taken a few little numerical approximations. These are going to be tiny, the two thirds are going to be very close to that. And in particular, so this is positive, which means that once we introduce a z that's not zero but zero point four. We do get some fluctuation. Uh, so once once z is positive, we do get some fluctuation in tightness. So it's, tightness is moving a little bit. When productivity goes up, goes up, tightness goes up a little bit. Unemployment is going to fall a little bit. But this elasticity, so that's good, you know, qualitatively. But the point is that quantitatively, this and that's the key point of uh, the Scheimer paper is that the d log theta d log a is way way smaller than 8 which was uh, the numerical value that we are targeting to match what we see in usd